the freetutor.com welcomes you to a free tutoring lesson. Today's topic is middle school math and to, today's lesson will focus on the properties of numbers. Uh, this is a lesson that should be mastered by grade level six. Properties of numbers. Properties of numbers are basically rules for math. Just like in any sport, say for example basketball, if you know the rules of basketball, it would make it easier for you to win a basketball game. The same applies in math. If you know the rules of math, it makes it easier to solve a math problem. You should become familiar with as many properties in math as possible because this will make it easier as you move into 7th and 8th grade math and pre-algebra and algebra. So let's look at a few properties that you should have, should have mastered by the 6th grade level. First is going to be the commutative property of addition and multiplication. Then we're going to look at the associative properties of addition and multiplication. Then we're going to look at the identity properties of addition and multiplication. And then we're going to look at the distributive property of multiplication. All of these properties you should be familiar with as you move into 7th and 8th grade math and pre-algebra. First, there's the commutative property of addition. The commutative property of addition says changing the order of add-ins does not change the sum. Again, the sum being an answer to an addition problem changing the order does not change the sum. For example, in our algebra problem here, a plus b equals b plus a. If we were to change out our variables or our letters for numbers, we could say, for example, we could say 6 plus 2 equals 2 plus 6. Okay, 6 plus 2 is 8, 2 plus 6 is 8, so obviously the two uh, expressions equal one another. Obviously you could change out any numbers that you want for a or b and you would still have the same uh, same answer, same property. So changing the order of add-ins does not change the sum. Next there's the commutative property of multiplication. This says changing the order of factors does not change the product. Again, the product being the answer to a multiplication problem. For example, looking at the algebra here, a times b equals b times a. That, if you were to change out the variables or letters, you could say for example, 6 times 2 equals 2 times 6. Obviously, 6 times 2 is 12. 2 times 6 is also 12. So changing the order of the factors did not change the product. So when you think of commutative property, think of order. That's what commutative property deals with. Changing the order does not change the product. And the commutative property addition says that changing the order does not change the sum. Now next, let's look at the associative property of addition. The associative property says changing the grouping of add-ins does not change the sum. Here in our example, our algebra says a plus b grouped together plus c equals a plus b plus c grouped together. So for example, if we were to change out the variables with numbers, we could say for example 9 plus 5 plus 3 equals 9 plus 5 plus 3. Obviously what changed is our grouping. But in both instances, the answer or the sum is still 17 on both sides of the equation. So changing the grouping did not change the sum. Likewise, the associative property of multiplication says basically the same thing. Changing the grouping of factors does not change the, change the product. In algebra, it might look like a times b grouped together times c equals a times b plus b times c grouped together. If we were to change out the variables for numbers, we might say 4 times 6 times 3 equals 4 times 6 times 3. Obviously, you can see from our example here, the only thing that changed was the grouping. In both instances, both sides of the equation is going to equal 72. So changing the grouping did not change the product. So when you think associative property, think of grouping. Associative property deals with grouping. The next property we're going to look at is the identity property of addition. The identity property of addition says the sum of 0 in any number is that number. For example, 0 plus a equals a. If we were to change out a with a number, say for example 7, 0 plus 7 equals 7. Next we have the identity property of multiplication. That says the product of 1 in any number is that number. a times 1 equals a. If we were to change out our variable a for a number, say for example 5, 5 times 1 equals 5. Again, that's the identity property of multiplication. Then we have the distributive property of multiplication. That says Basically, it shows how multiplication affects addition and subtraction. Here we have two examples. We have a times b plus c grouped together equals a times b plus a times c. 
we're going to change our variables for numbers. For example, 8 times 4 plus 6 would equal 8 times 4 plus 8 times 6. Another example would be 8 times b minus c equals ab minus ac. If we're to change out our variables for numbers, 7 times 6 minus 2 would equal 7 times 6 minus 7 times 2. So these are basically the properties, and if you're not familiar with them, I encourage you maybe to stop the video, go back and look at them one more time, or uh, look at them one, one step at a time. Now, what I want to do is I want to show you how these properties can work for us, and what we mainly do with these properties as we become familiar with them is they help us to actually improve our ability to do mental math or to do math in our heads. Say, for example, say for example we want to find the sum of 32 plus 28. First, we know 28 is actually 20 plus 8. In other words, we change the grouping. 20 plus 8 equals 28. Next, we add our 8 from 20 plus 8 to 32. 32 plus 8 is 40. Then we take our 40 and we add it back to the 20 that's left over. 40 plus 20 is 60. So we can conclude that 32 plus 28 equals 60. This is using this addition, I mean, the, the both the commutative property and the associative property of addition to solve an, an addition problem quickly. Take another example. Let's say we want to find 4 times 8 times 25. First, we can change the order of our multiplication problem. Instead of saying 4 times 8 times 25, we can say 4 times 25 times 8. That's using the commutative property of multiplication. We change the order. Next, we use the associative property to group together two numbers that will be easy to multiply in our heads. For example, 4 times, 20, 4 times 25 we know is 100. And so we're left with 100 times 8, which is 800. So 4 times 8 times 25 is 800. That's using both the commutative property and the associative property of multiplication to solve a problem quickly in our heads. One more example of this is the distributive property. Say, for example, we have 4 times 29. We know 29 is really 30 minus 1. So instead of saying 4 times 29, we can say 4 times 30 minus 1. Then using the distributive property, we can say 4 times 30 minus 4 times 1. 4 times 30, we should be able to multiply quickly in our heads, is 120. 4 times 1, we should be able to multiply quickly in our heads, is 4. So 120 minus 4 is 116. So we could say 4 times 29 is 116. These are just a few examples of how you can use properties to solve math problems quickly and, and to help you as you move into pre-algebra and algebra. Hope this has been helpful to you. If you're interested in more free lessons, please visit us at, at www.thefreetutor.com. Thank you.